Methodist Episcopal Church here in Opelika. We thank God for your presence here in the sanctuary as well as those who are joining us by way of social media. We give God praise for this first Sunday in November, a season of Thanksgiving, a time of gratitude. Amen. And so we come this morning to just give God all the praise. Those who can, we would ask that you would stand to your feet for our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
for prayer. Amen. 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 As we give God praise for what he did for us at the cross. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come now. Yes. At this most opportune time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's praying time. Yes, Lord. And God, we come singing and declaring and believing that truly it was at the cross, at the cross. Yes, that's where we first saw the light. And so God, we come this morning to tell you thank you for what your son Jesus Christ did yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. over 2,000 yes, plus years ago. Not only God are we here to tell you thank you, thank you Lord. but oh God, if we had 10,000 tongues, yes. it would not be enough to tell you thank you, thank you Lord. for all that you have done. Yes. I heard somebody else say, if you don't do anything else, yes, Lord. oh Lord, you've already done more than enough. Yes. So this morning, dear Heavenly Father, we stop by and pause in this moment of prayer. Not only to tell you thank you, thank you but God, we come to express with our attitude that we have gratitude yes, for all the yes. many, many yes. blessings yes. that you Lord. keep pouring yes. out down upon us. Yes, Lord. Now, Lord, we assembled ourselves here together mm -hmm. for your word decrees and declares that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves. Yes. But you also tell us in your word that where there are one or two who are gathered together in your name, yes. there you would be right there in the midst. You, so God, since we are already here, yes. and I believe that we are all gathered together in your name, the name that is above every name. Yes. For at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that he is indeed Lord of Lords. He is King of Kings. So God, we come this morning for no show, form, nor fashion. No, but just to lift up your holy and your righteous name. No, for we realize that your word says to us, if you be lifted up, uh, that you would draw all men unto you. Uh, so we come this morning, oh God, for no other purpose uh, but to lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, and so, God, we invite you into this worship service. Yes. Uh, we ask that you come by the power of your Holy yes. Spirit. Uh, we ask, so oh God, that you would have thine own way yes. uh, from the youngest of us even yes. to the oldest of us. Yes. Uh, touch us, oh God, yes. so that when we leave this place, yes. uh, we'll know that we've been in your presence. Uh, and where the presence of the Lord is, uh, there is liberty. Uh, so set us free on today, oh God. Uh, and God, we come praying for those uh, who perhaps are less fortunate than us. Uh, we lift up those who are sick, oh God, uh, who have a desire to be in the house of worship. Uh, but because of physical impairments, uh, they cannot make it out to the house of prayer. Uh, God, we lift up those who are behind uh, prison bars, uh, who are in jail cells. Uh, we lift up those who are in prison, but even in their minds, oh God. Uh, we lift them up to you right now, oh God, and say, set uh, the captive free uh, like only you can do. Uh, and then, God, we pray uh, for those uh, who do not have food, clothing, and shelter. Uh, so, God, we pray uh, that you touch our hearts, uh, you touch our minds, oh God. 
God. Uh, and let us realize that we are our brothers and our sisters keepers. Uh, God, we pray now uh, for the worship experience yes. on today. Uh, we pray, oh God, uh, that it will not be worship as usual. Uh, but God, let us have uh, an unusual type yes. of worship. Uh, God, we come before you now, uh, asking you, oh God, uh, to remove uh, the spirit of suicide. Uh, oh God, when we look out across uh, just our immediate area, uh, we find a preacher, oh God, uh, who has taken his own life. Uh, and now, God, uh, we pray that you have mercy uh, upon us uh, and upon and every family that is grieving right now. And God, we ask you to look at this world, the world that you created. We ask, oh God, for your peace, peace that surpasses all understanding, peace that can cause a war to cease fire, peace that can God, we call on you today, for we have no one else to call on. And now, oh God, we pray for unspoken requests. The things that people won't even ask others to pray for. But oh God, there's a need. And because you're all-knowing, you're all-powerful, and you're an all-seeing God, we ask, oh God, even on unspoken requests, that if it is your will, that God, you would answer those unspoken requests. Yes, Lord. And God, in all that we do, we'll be careful yes. to continue to give you the praise, yes. offer you all the glory yes, that you deserve. It is in the matchless name of Jesus mm -hmm. that we pray yes, Lord. and ask these blessings. Yes, Lord. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. Say it one more time for God hears and answers our prayer. Yes. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Hear our prayer.
So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. Amen. And fell down on his face at his feet, mm -hmm. giving thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Amen. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were they not were, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Read verse 18 again. Were there not any found All right. All right. who returned All right. to give God glory except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise. Because he was still at his feet worshiping. All right, all right. He said to him, Arise. Go your way. Your faith mm -hmm. has made you well. Amen. Thus in the reading Amen. of the scripture. Amen. May God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. 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 Let us now stand to our feet for our Decalogue hymn. We will do our Decalogue today in its entirety. For those who do not have a bulletin, you can find that in the order of service at the very beginning of our hymn. I yourself a graven image of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Oh, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep his law. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work. You are your son or your daughter, your manservant, or your maidservant, or your cow, or the sojourner who is within your gates for in six days. The Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it.
that your days may be long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Oh, have mercy upon us and in You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depends all the law and the prophets.
us bear in mind, we're in the season of Thanksgiving. It was last night that I was preparing this message that I ran across this very verse that we just sung at the end of our giving. It was David, I believe it's in First Chronicles, the 29th chapter, giving his farewell Thanksgiving. He told God, all things come from thee, O Lord. And is of thine own. What we give back to him is his own. Have we given thee? Let us bear that in mind as we continue to give, not only in worship service, but as we begin to bless one another and go throughout this holiday season and beyond, that all things come from God. And when we give, we're just giving them back what already belongs to him. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we will receive our announcements. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And uh, first of all, we want to say hello to Sister Jeanette Burden. It's so good, good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. It's just so wonderful to see you. Um, and then also we have a couple of visitors back here with us. Would you guys like to stand and have a word to say? Okay. Nice to see you guys. Okay. All right, please continue to pray uh, for the sick and shut in members. Remembering that the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous does indeed uh, avail much. Um, I want us to take a look at our basement renovation project. Our uh, thermometer is getting on up there, y'all. We're at 83%. We currently have $29,737 that we have raised. And we want to give God all the praise and all the glory because all of the glory belongs to God. And then we want to thank everyone who has given, who has worked hard, who has sold fish, who have worked with Juneteenth, who have worked with the praise. There wasn't a lot of people there, but then Joyce was like, gee, if you're talking about an old school Jerry, Jerry Lewis telethon, the people don't be in the audience. They be at home watching on TV and giving. And give is what they did. Yeah. Our uh, goal for last week was $5,000 as of touches of, of, of people who said they're still going to give. So we look for that total to increase. So thank you all. Thank God and thank everyone for everything you did to make that an overwhelming success. Um, Restore Yoga. We will have our Restore Yoga classes beginning again on Wednesday from 6.30 to 7, so come on out. Adriel Vincent is an awesome teacher. The class is so relaxing, and then it, it just is also good for us physically and spiritually, mentally. It's just a good thing, so come on out um, for your Restore Yoga. It's only 30 minutes. She, it's not going to hold you past 30 minutes, so come on out and enjoy the yoga. Um, 2023 planning meeting uh, that will be held this Saturday, November the 11th at uh, 10 o'clock a.m. It will be at Bethel AME Church, uh, uh, and it will be a combined planning meeting for the Phoenix City and Tuskegee districts, okay? Um, don't forget Sunday. Sunday, we will be having an appreciation, a celebration of 20 years of ministry for our own pastor, the Reverend Monique Summers. Um, our guest speaker will be uh, Minister Tanya Brown from Mount Vernon. And then our guest choir will be the University of Alabama Afro-American Gospel Choir. And so it pl plans to be a... It, it, uh, we plan on having a fabulous time. We want everybody to come out and invite 
guests to come out and worship with us. So as we celebrate 20 years in the ministry for our own pastor, we will have dinner served after uh, the program. Everyone will be welcome to uh, have dinner with us. So, um, so just please make plans to attend and invite somebody and bring somebody with you if you got to bring them kicking and screaming. Just bring them on in here. Once they get here, they won't regret it. Um, the Advent Community Y Youth Cantata. Um, that will be what day would would the cantata actually be on? First Sunday in December. Would be the first Sunday in December. Okay. The rehearsals will start on Saturday, November the 18th. And the first rehearsal, will all of them be here at St. Luke or would they travel? That's okay, okay. So the first rehearsal will be here at St. Luke at 1230 Central Standard Time. And um, uh, so come on, if you have any youth that would like to participate in the cantata, then just please make sure that they are here and ready to sing. Um, 2023-24 church conference. That would be a church conference um, on November the 19th. Is that Saturday? No. No? Sunday. Okay, so it would be following church. Okay, so November the 19th, uh, following service and um, for the planning and for our 2024 conference year. So make plans to attend. That'll be after immediately following church, St. Luke's Church Conference. Okay. And then, of course, um, don't forget about the... Um, women's Conference. Uh, the 30th and 39th annual convention, which will be uh, at St. John's AME Church, December the 1st and 2nd. The registration has passed, so if you hadn't registered, you missed it, because I said there will be no on-site registration, but just keep it, if you missed it, keep it in prayer. Um, um, it will be December 1st and 2nd. St. Luke will have its annual virtual Advent meditations, and they will be December the 3rd through the 24th. They'll be Monday through Friday at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time each night. And we have the uh, call-in information here, uh, so don't forget to join us for those Advent meditations that prepares us to receive the Christ child. Um, you can order your Advent um, devotional, and it uh, has the pricing here, and the pricing is strange to me. Pricing is three dollars plus shipping if you order it individually off of the website. Okay. Com. Okay. It's under the Christian Education Department, but you can, I believe, Elaine will be receiving orders as well. So if you okay. would like to purchase through Elaine. Just give her a call or text her okay. if you would like a devotion. Okay. All right. All righty. And then, uh, happy birthday, November birthdays. Um, Reverend Monique Summers has her 25th birthday on November the 21st. And so keep that in mind. And also, Brother Derek Thomas will have a birthday on November the 22nd. So keep that in mind. Uh, we will, uh, are we gonna have a trustee meeting? It'll be Thursday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Yeah, cause there are some things that we do need to discuss. Um, and then the stewards will be next Thursday um, at 7 p.m. Okay. Don't forget Sunday school. And are there any other announcements? Not me. Thank you all for paying attention to those announcements. Just look at the church Facebook page. All of those are listed there. If you know of any young people who would like to participate um, with the Advent, um, please let me know uh, so that we can include them. I can pick them up. It's a beautiful concert.
is we want to keep in mind the remainder of our calendar year. Um, we do Advent here on Sunday mornings um, throughout the Advent season as well. And we have our Christmas play that is on the horizon. And so we do want to finish the year strong. So continue to stay in prayer as we close out um, 2023 and move forward into 2024. Amen. Amen. We ask that you continue to pray or send a text out. Uh, yesterday, there has been some movement from, at the planning meeting. Uh, you will know that the Reverend Maddie Edwards has now been moved to St. Paul, Troy, Alabama, pastoring the third largest and leading church in the AME Church in the state of Alabama. Amen. So we salute her for her 25 years of service she has now and elevated and so she asked our prayers on um, the Reverend Gwendolyn Bro has moved from St. John Tuskegee to St. Paul Lynette and so we uh, continue to pray for her as she is um, pastoring there and started this morning and I believe today is Pastor Bro's birthday so if you get a chance reach out to her and wish her a happy birthday amen and just look at the flyers, there were uh, a number of moves with the male preachers as well as the female, and I listed them, those from, coming from uh, the Northeast Conference, the new pastor at St. Um, not St. Um, John, but at Lee Chapel is uh, the Reverend James Parker. He is replacing Reverend Mary Edwards. And so we look forward to working closely, uh, continuously working closely with Lee Chapel. Those are the only announcements I believe that I have at this time. We will now have our sermonic hymn and move into the preaching of the word of God.
together if you truly thank God. Yes, Lord. Every reality. Hallelujah. Thank him for his love. Amen. Thank him for his protection. Amen. Not sometime, but the songwriter said every hour. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Keep on doing. Hallelujah. Great things for me. Amen. Amen. St. Luke ought to be shouting because he keep doing great things for St. Luke. Amen. 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 When we look around, look at what God has done. Nobody could have foresaw that we would be close to $30,000 above and beyond your tithes and your offerings to go into a building fund. Nobody could have imagined that within three months you would pay back $15,000 and now on the brink of closing the year out, completing the work that God has allowed us to start downstairs. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing for us. And so we give him honor, we give him praise. You ought to tell him thank you just for waking you up this morning. You ought to tell him thank you for clothing you in your right mind. You ought to tell him thank you. He saw fit to let us gather together in the house of worship one more time. And so our attitude ought to be an attitude of gratitude. Amen. Amen. Let us pray to Heavenly Father. God, we truly thank you. For what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard, we thank you. For what even our mind has conceived, this preaching time. So God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you're our rock, you're our strength, you are our redeemer. You said study to show oneself approved unto God. A workman who need not be ashamed, but one who rightly divide your word of truth. Speak now, Lord, your word of truth. To these your people is your servants' prayer, I pray. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. Say it one more time. Amen. Amen and amen. Truly, we will have an attitude of gratitude. And people with that type of attitude will give glory to God. Amen. Amen. Our scripture text was read earlier in your hearing, coming from the Gospel of St. Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 11 through 19. Our key verse that we'll center the message on today will be uh, the Gospel of Luke 17, the 11th chapter, verse 18 will be our key verse. But just for context, we'll read it again in your hearing, coming from the New King James Version of the text and it reads thusly. Now it happened as he went into Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off and they lifted up their voices and they said Jesus Master mm -hmm. have mercy on us. Whenever you need mercy, you better go to the one who has it. And the Bible said brand new mercies are available every day. I believe it's in lamentation that he reminds us. And to those who give mercy, mercy will come back unto you. You reap what you sow. Amen. And verse 14 says, so when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was as they went, they were cleansed. Mm -hmm. And one of them, when he saw he was healed, he returned. And with a loud voice, glorified God. He didn't come and tap him on the shoulder. I need to tell you something. Mm. You know, when the Lord does something for you, sometimes it'll make you run. Sometimes it'll make you shout. Sometimes it'll make you fall down and worship him. The Bible says that he returned. And he didn't come low key. He came with a loud voice that glorified God. Mm -hmm. And fell down on his face at his feet. Giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Not the most likely person that would come. That we would expect to come. But he fell down on his face and at his feet. Giving Jesus thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, were not ten cleansed? Mm -hmm. But where are the nine? Mm -hmm. right. I just see one person coming back to glorify me 
for the healing. Jesus said, but, but there were ten and I only see this one that has come back. Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Hmm. And he said to him, you know, when you return to give God glory, you might get a double portion. All right. All right. He said to him, Arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. That in any area in his life that was sick, mm -hmm. it was made well. All right. All That's right. good news for the All believer. Right. Amen. All right. And so today I thought it necessary that we would preach a message entitled, an attitude of gratitude will give God glory. When you have an attitude of gratitude, it will be easy to give God glory. Not man, Amen. but God the glory. Us as you are relieved at this time. In Luke 17 verses 11 through 19, uh, according to the commentary, got questions uh, .org. It, it says that uh, it records the account of 10 men who had an infectious skin disease, commonly translated as leprosy. Mm -hmm. And in the Israelite community, when a person uh, discovered a rash or skin disorder, he or she had to go to the priest uh, for examination. The priest then determined whether this was a contagious disease and whether the person was to be declared ceremonially unclean, according to Leviticus 13 and 1. The Jewish law prohibited anybody with such a disease from associating with the general community. They had to be isolated and many times lived as outcasts until they died, according to Leviticus 13, 45 to 46. This was necessary in order to keep the infectious disease from becoming an epidemic. But for those afflicted, it would be a life sentence. The Bible says that these were some lepers that came to Jesus and they were crying out uh, for him to have mercy. And indeed he did. He told them to go show themselves to the priest. And the Bible records that as they were going, uh, the one, uh, no doubt I don't know this, but the Bible notes that he, he noticed that he was healed. Mm -hmm. And he went back to Jesus to tell him thank you. Mm -hmm. He went back to Jesus to offer him glory. And so today, just for a few moments, I want us to look at that word glory. Mm -hmm. uh, an attitude of gratitude will cause people truly to give glory to God. Amen. I've heard it said before that we can't give God glory. All we can do is offer it. But the text says here in verse number 18, where there are not any found who return to give mm -hmm. glory to God except this Samaritan. Mm -hmm. And so today, let us look at um, how is it that we can give glory to God. Uh, because the lepers aren't the only ones that's been healed, that's All received right. a okay. blessing. I'm All sure right. if we could pass the mic, uh, if I could drop the mic and somebody else could pick it up, you could tell me what God has done for you. Amen? Right. Uh, but how can we give glory to the King of glory? Because uh, the Bible says in, in Psalms 28, 24, and 8, glory belongs to God. And, and God reveals his glory. And we can observe his glory. But how in the world do we give glory to the king of glory? All right. To glorify God is not just to bestow glory on God or to aid his glory. But it's truly to recognize and to acknowledge the glory. The basic meaning of the word glory is heavy in weight. It is the weighty importance and shining majesty that accompanies God's presence. The verb glory means to give weight or in other words, to give honor to God. In fact, one writer put it this way, it is the highest level 
of giving honor and majesty to God when we glorify him. Thus to glorify God is to recognize God for who he is and who he really is. And then when we recognize him, we respond appropriately. Uh, in the text, the man came back and all he could do was fall down mm. and worship him. Right. And he continued to worship him until Jesus told him, rise up now. Mm -hmm. Go. You've been made well by your faith. And so today, just for a few moments, I, I came across a study uh, that Mike Livingston did. Some of you may be familiar with LifeWay.com that does a lot of blogs and excellent teaching. But in it, he, he begins to talk about ways that we as believers uh, can give glory to God. How can we honor God in our daily walk? Jesus said, is this the only one that came back to give glory to God? I want us to ask ourselves as we listen to the many ways that we can give glory to God and ask yourself, Lord, have I elected to give you glory? My Lord. Glory that you are so worthy of. The first way that I want to submit to the church today, a simple way that we can give God glory is with our lips. Uh, we can praise him with our lips. Psalm 63 and 3 says it this way. Because your loving kindness is better than life to me, my lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When the man returned, the Bible says that it was a loud praise. It was a loud acknowledgement. In other words, uh, people probably could hear him from a distance coming back to tell Jesus thank you. Coming back with an attitude of gratitude. So the first way that I want to submit to us today, when God has done something for you, you ought to open up your mouth and give him uh, some praise. Uh, I know we can do it because uh, I watched the football games yesterday too uh, and Perry went to sleep on Alabama but I came back in there and I asked him what's the, I don't know what the score is I, mean, I just want to see it he caught with Alabama win and I began to give a loud praise saying roll tide so if I can roll with the tide surely I can roll with the one who made the tide and so with our lips we ought to learn how to give God glory. Amen. When's the last time you glorified God with your mouth? All right. All An right. audible praise. All right. The psalmist says, with my lips, mm -hmm. I'll glorify you. Right. I know some of us say, I have a quiet praise. I, I do it quietly. But when Jesus does something big for you, you ought to do it loudly. All right. All right. The next way that I want to submit to us that we can glorify God, that we can give God glory is that when we pray, we pray in Jesus' name. Uh, for the Bible says in John 14 and 13, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Right. To pray in Jesus' name means to align our prayers and our desires with God's purpose. So he says in John 14, if I back up to verse 12, he said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me and the works that I do, he will do also and greater works than these he shall do because I'm going to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I'm going to do it in the Father, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask it uh, in my name, I'm going to do it. Uh, stop by to remind the church uh, that we ought to praise God with our lips uh, and give him glory. Uh, but when you pray, uh, pray in his name. Uh, he said, I'm going to do what you ask me to do in prayer. Because it's going to give my Father some glory. So when we pray, uh, we're not just praying any kind of way. But we're coming before God in the name of Jesus. Uh, and so I stopped by to tell you that he said uh, that when you pray in my name, I do it. I don't do it for vain glory. I do it so that the Father is glorified. Wasn't it Jesus on the cross who said, be glorified? I'm doing it so God may be glorified. If you lift me up, 
I'm going to draw men unto me so that God may be glorified. All right. We give God glory when we pray in his name. We give him glory with the praise of our lips. The third way that I want to submit that we can give God glory is that you ought to produce some spiritual fruit. Uh, the Bible says in John, the 15th chapter, round about the 8th verse, uh, Jesus says, my father is glorified by this, uh, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. The fruit that is issued out of the union of being in connection with Jesus and, and obedience to him will bring glory to God. It's whenever we detach ourselves from God that we cannot truly bring glory to his name. But John 15 says it this way in verse 1. He says, I'm the true vine and my father is the vine dresser and every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You're already clean. Because of the word which I have spoken to you, abide in me. And I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. And so in order for us to produce spiritual fruit, uh, you better make sure you connected uh, to the true vine. Now, a lot of us got connections. I said a lot of us got connections. We got connections with our sororities and our fraternities and our social clubs. We got connections uh, on our jobs. We got connections uh, even in the family. There are connections. There are some that are connected more closely than others. But Jesus says, uh, unless you stay connected to me, uh, you cannot bear much fruit. He said, I am the vine and ye are the branches and who abides in me, in him, in her. I bear much fruit for without me. For without me, you cannot do nothing. Right. If anyone does not abide in me, he's cast out like a branch and wither. And they gather them and throw them in the fire and they burn. But if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, here goes the prayer, you ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. That my father is glorified when you bear some fruit so people will know that you're my disciples. Stop by to tell the church that when we have an attitude of gratitude, we make sure we're producing spiritual fruit. Well, somebody's here and saying, well, preacher, what is spiritual fruit? I'm glad you asked because Galatians 5 22 and 23 lets us know uh, what that spiritual fruit is. Uh, it is love, uh, it's joy, uh, and it's peace. Uh, when we are connected to the true vine, uh, we will have some love. Uh, we can love one another. Uh, we can love the unlovable. Uh, when we are connected to the true vine, now, we have joy, uh, we have peace, uh, we have long suffering. Uh, you can put up with some folks uh, over and over and over again. Uh, you got kindness, uh, goodness, uh, faithfulness, uh, gentleness, uh, and self control. Uh, the Bible says uh, you'll know them uh, by the fruit uh, that they bear. Uh, if you want to give God glory, uh, I dare you uh, to start bearing fruit uh, that looks like uh, what's recorded in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Uh, the Bible says uh, you'll have that love, joy, peace, uh, kindness, long-suffering, faithfulness, uh, your self-control. Uh, he says against it uh, there is no law. Uh, 
and those who are in Christ uh, and have been crucified with the flesh, uh, their passions and desires. Uh, if we live in the spirit, uh, you ought to also walk in the spirit. Uh, let us not become conceited, uh, provoking one another uh, and envying one another. Uh, when uh, we have an attitude of gratitude, uh, we start producing fruit. Uh, and that fruit uh, is because we're connected to the vine. Uh, ask yourself, uh, Lord, uh, what kind of fruit uh, am I bearing? Uh, will the world see me? Uh, do they see a disciple uh, of Jesus Christ? Uh, do they begin to glorify God uh, because of my actions, uh, because of my attitude? Uh, stop by to tell the church uh, that when uh, we uh, have an attitude of gratitude, uh, we produce uh, spiritual fruit. Uh, when we have an attitude of gratitude, uh, you pray uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, when we have uh, an attitude of gratitude, uh, we praise Him uh, with our lips. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, and when uh, we have an attitude of gratitude, uh, you look uh, and you remain sexually moral. You don't engage in sexual immorality according to 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, verses 18 to 20. The Bible says, flee from sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside his body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Don't you know our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who dwells inside of us, whom we receive from God and you are not your own. We've been bought with a price. Good God Almighty, the scripture says, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which belongs to God. Stop by and tell you that when we glorify God and have this attitude of gratitude, Walk around pure uh, and undefiled. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, therefore glorify Him. Uh, this temple uh, belongs to God. Uh, no wonder Paul wrote, uh, said, present your body uh, a living sacrifice, uh, holy uh, and acceptable unto God. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, I stop by to tell the church uh, an attitude of gratitude. Uh, a sexually pure life, uh, not uh, having immorality uh, in our bodies. Uh, when uh, we have an attitude of gratitude, uh, we produce uh, spiritual fruit. Uh, we pray in His name uh, and we praise Him with our lips. Uh, I know this ain't shopping material, uh, but I got uh, three more points. Uh, when uh, we have an attitude of gratitude. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, we pursue a uh, uh, seek the good in others. Uh, the Bible says uh, in 1 Corinthians uh, 10 and 31, uh, we find Paul's writing. Uh, he said, whatever you do, uh, whatever you eat, uh, whatever you drink, uh, do it to the glory of God. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, in the context uh, Paul was discussing uh, whether it was right uh, for believers to eat meat uh, that was offered to idols. Uh, he stated the God in principle uh, in verse 21, 24. Uh, no one is to seek his own good, uh, but the good of the others. Uh, when we make lifestyle changes uh, and choices for the good of others, uh, we glorify God. Uh, can I help you by telling you uh, that he we enter into a place and if it's not against the will of God I've gone preach many messages on the floor giving God praise it wasn't their custom to allow a female on the platform so I took my place at the podium on the floor I preached to the glory of God Paul said I do it that I don't cause uh, what other people say you shouldn't do uh, to set up and say uh, they can tell me uh, what I should or should not do. Uh, our mission uh, is to see.
uh, and we seek out uh, the good in others. Uh, the scripture says, uh, if any of those uh, who believes uh, invite you to a dinner uh, and you go to eat uh, and whatever is set before you, uh, you begin to ask questions uh, for conscience sake. Uh, for you say, uh, I don't want to eat this uh, because uh, it was offered to idols. Uh, he said, eat it uh, anyway. Uh, your conscience uh, may tell you not to, uh, but anything uh, and everything uh, that's made by God uh, is already sanctified. Uh, it's already holy. Uh, so don't cause division. Uh, but say, For God loves a cheerful giver. But when we get down to verse 13, it says, While through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God. When we learn how to give generously, when we learn how to help our brothers and our sisters, when we realize we are their keepers, the Bible says that they begin to thank God for the acts that we do. 
The Bible says that when we give, uh, we ought to learn how to do it cheerfully, uh, and we ought to do it generously. Uh, I stopped by to tell you uh, that whatever you have uh, and you offer it unto God, uh, there's a blessing uh, that will come back upon you. Uh, I noticed uh, in Mark chapter 12, uh, the widow uh, made an offering. Uh, the Bible says there were many there uh, put their offering in the bucket. But she had two copper coins uh, that she tossed in. Uh, can I tell you uh, that when you give generously, uh, the Bible says uh, that Jesus was there uh, and he was looking. Uh, anybody here want God to look uh, on how you give? Uh, and if you're giving generously, uh, good God Almighty. Uh, the Bible says uh, in John 6, 5 to 13, uh, Jesus. When he finished teaching, uh, he looked at the crowd uh, and noticed uh, that it was getting late. Uh, and he thought uh, that he should feed them uh, as the disciples, uh, and they couldn't see anyway. Uh, but there was a little boy uh, who had a lunch, uh, and he gave it. And the Bible doesn't say uh, that he fussed about giving it. Uh, right. The Bible doesn't say uh, that he said, my mama packed this for me. Uh, but he gave his lunch uh, and he fed 5,000. Uh, it was given uh, generously. Uh, the Shunammite woman, uh, service to the messenger of God uh, who kept passing through. Uh, she went to her husband. Uh, she said, husband. Uh, we need to build a room uh, onto this house uh, cause there's a man of God uh, that's coming through here uh, and we ought to open our doors uh, and be generous to him uh, cause it would be uh, sometime later uh, that uh, her husband would die uh, and her generosity uh, would pay off uh, in the end uh, mama would say uh, serving the Lord uh, will pay off after a while, I noticed there was another widow woman in Zarephath. She gave her oil and a flower, just a little batch to the prophet. She gave it to him, and the Bible says it was a famine in the land because she gave generously to God Almighty her oil and a flower. It never ran out. Good God Almighty, when you give, you're loyal. Come here, Ruth. She told them, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I'm willing to die. She was willing to give to her mother-in-law and take care of her. Married her. She took Ruth in, Naomi in. I stopped by to tell the church, you ought to purposely give, and it ought to be with generosity. Good God Almighty, the last thing that I need with us is that you and I ought to practice living honorable among unbelievers. The Bible says that we ought to conduct ourselves honorably among the Gentiles. Why? So that when they slander you, you didn't know that folks don't talk about you, persecute you, and say all manners of evil falsely against you. But the Bible says if you walk upright, if you live an honorable life, when the slanderers, when the evildoers come, they'll observe your work and glorify God on the day he visits. First Peter 2 and 12. And so I say to you, live and practice living an honorable life. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men. They'll see your good deeds. They'll see your good works. They won't glorify you and I, but they'll glorify the Father, which is in heaven. Matthew 5 and 16 say we are the light of the world and a light that can't be hidden. I stop by to tell the church that we are a practice 
uh, living uh, an honorable life uh, that gives glory uh, unto God. Uh, that when folks slander our name, uh, somebody else will stand up uh, and say, I know Monique ain't like that. Uh, I know her name. Uh, a good name uh, is rather to be chosen uh, than silver or gold. Uh, and uh, be persecuted, uh, but remain faithful. Uh, the Bible says uh, that when uh, they persecute us, uh, say our manner of evil falsely against us, uh, keep on standing uh, and remain faithful, uh, for great uh, will be your reward uh, up in heaven. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, whether we live uh, or whether we die, uh, we ought to remain uh, Faithful, uh, come here, Stephen. Uh, when Paul, uh, he was Saul then, uh, persecuting the church. Uh, he stood by uh, and watched Stephen uh, be stoned to death. Uh, but the Bible says uh, he was persecuted uh, for righteousness sake. Uh, and as they were killing Stephen, uh, he looked up toward heaven and uh, said, God, forgive them. Uh, they don't know what they're doing. Uh, the Bible says... Uh, Jesus stood up, uh, but I read somewhere else. Uh, he's sitting on the right hand uh, of God the Father Almighty. Uh, but when we're persecuted, uh, I'm going to remain faithful uh, even to death. Uh, when Stephen was dying, uh, Jesus was standing, uh, welcoming him uh, into the kingdom. Uh, I stopped by to tell the church uh, in this season of Thanksgiving. Let your attitude be one of gratitude Amen. and give God glory. All right. I didn't say offer it, I said give it. All right, man. Anybody ever gave you something you tried to give it back mm -hmm. and you said you came and you pushed it and walked? I dare you to give it glory All right. and walk away. All right. All right. It's a All blessing right. in it. So as we enter, this season mm. of Thanksgiving, make sure our attitude is in the right place. Yes. Persecuted, but faithful. Yes. That's our way of giving God's glory. All right. We're going to practice All right. living honorable. All right. We're going to purposely give generously. We're going to pursue to seek out the good in others. We're going to remain pure. Mm. And we will produce spiritual fruit. Because mm. we connected to a vine. Mm. We're going to pray in Jesus' name. All right. And we're going to praise him with our lips. All right. That's how we give glory to God. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself with your inner voice. As you tell the children at school. God, have I been giving you? And if I haven't, Lord, I'm sorry. Mm. But starting this day forward, mm. I'll have an attitude of gratitude mm. that'll give you glory, Amen. that'll honor you. Amen. You may not fall down at his feet like the leper did in the text. I don't know how you will choose to offer your glory unto God. But I am suggesting and submitting to the church that we offer him, we give him the glory. Why? Because the doors of the church are still open. Mm. Jesus came. He lived. And he died. Mm -hmm. That you and I may have a right to eternal life. Mm -hmm. We ought to have an attitude of gratitude. Yes. He didn't say that. Mm. But somebody said, that's not how. Mm -hmm. The story ends. Yes. Three days later, yes. he rose Again, yes. that's love. Yes. And so when we offer Christ to you today, because mm. he's not dead, he is alive. And if you don't know him today, in the pardon of your sins, we offer Christ to you with everyone, those who can, standing all over the church, who's willing to come and give their life to Christ and confess Jesus is Lord. He said, thou shalt be saved. The second appeal, if you know that you turned away from God, 
Lord, have mercy. And you want to get back in that right place with him. We offer Christ to you to come and renew your covenant. And if you're looking for a church home, we offer St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church with everyone who's willing to come today to Jesus just now. Oh God, seeing none have come. We thank you, Lord, for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you for the spirit of gratitude. And that's going to be our attitude. Not only in this season of Thanksgiving, but God, in the season of our lives. Oh God, we want to give you glory. For you're so worthy of it. Help us, oh God, to do all that you have instructed us to do. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. And we give you the glory. In the precious name of Jesus, every believer, I say amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 